saying that they can't go against VP. They only can settle. I said, why? They said, oh, because they're our client. I mean, Bring I've reached out over to three, you. maybe over three to 400 attorneys. Every single attorney I reach out to, they want to settle the matter. And they're advising me that, oh, no, you should just settle with them. I said, are you crazy? So I couldn't get any attorney. So I said, okay. I wrote to the court and I said to the judge, I explained to him, and I said, I want to represent myself. And the oh. judge said to, and the judge <laughs> said to me that. You want to go pro se? The judge, yes, and the judge said to me, said, okay, so you want to go pro se? And I said, mm -hmm. yes, I want to go pro se. Because all the attorney that um, I speak to. Grams Magan said, charge up a phone. Can't miss this. You can't. <laughs> yeah, can't mix it. Yeah, let's, can't miss it. Charge up a phone. <laughs> so, so I wrote to the judge and I said to the judge that um, all the attorneys that have reached out, in, to reach out to New York are complicit. They, they have already involved with this company and so therefore i can't get an attorney so um i have to defend myself and he said okay go pro se and that's where that's a nightmare right no no nothing about law or anything but we go pro se all right so i respond back to the lawsuit and i and i respond you know like you're teaching a baby a uh, little kid off a read or just say the ABC. <laughs> So I respond to the judge like that in Lynn. No, my battery come back and I got dead too. So Lehman terms. So yeah, so I, I, I respond. I respond. Oh, huh? go for the charge. No, I'm not going for the charge. The card is serious. <laughs> so yeah. let, 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 let me go get the charge. The card don't want us to death. Let me get it. Let, let me go get the charger. One yeah, second. I'm patiently waiting. Yeah, let me go get the charger. Yes, sir. <laughs> Right. I hope you're sharing this live because this is a very important story, I believe, to the industry. To, not in the industry, to reggae music, right? The music that we do. I think it's very, very important because a lot of times people look at artists and producers from Jamaica and think, oh, they don't really know what they're doing. Them not understand the business of music. Them are sign contract with them no know about. But listen, we definitely are like dealing with a, a company that does not operate like a company should. And we find it difficult. Like if the first time that I ever tried to find an attorney, especially in New York, the attorney tell me, say, um, you want me to call? You want me to call Chris? Like, we're, we're cool. You want me to call him? <laughs> Imagine that you're going to look for the service of somebody and the person, the liar, or you I looked for help. I said, yo, you want me to call him? Like, we're cool. Should I just call him? No. Anyway, continue. Trust me. As I said to you, all, most, most of the attorneys in New York have a relationship with them, and so they can't sue them. And, and it's a way for them to protect themselves. But anyway, so... I respond back to the judge, tell the lawsuit, and I dissect everything that I said and said to the judge that false, false. I just put false and everything. <laughs> God, everything. You never know what to say. Just put false. No, no, no. It's not know what to say. No, everything I mean, like, was. You, 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 you cannot respond like an attorney because of obviously not, listen, you don't know the law. I'm right. not an attorney. I'm writing a letter to the judge. They right. send a lawsuit, I'm sending back a letter. Right. <laughs> so I just respond, false, 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 uh, yeah, false, false. Um, and, and then I start to put like misleading the judge, misleading the judge, so the judge, you know, judge going to get upset about that. So I started to say, misleading the judge, blah, blah, blah. blah. And then I, I put that, that there's a contract that the plaintiff did not list in the timeline. And not only that, the, the plaintiff didn't list, I didn't let the court aware that I have a publisher who, who they have been paying my publishing to over for many years. Because the right. way they wrote the lawsuit that everything that um, they have released for me and all my, all my composition and everything that they have been administrating them for over the years. So the judge... The judge, I, I respond back. 
now they now they know that it's for real. It's business. It's so time because I, now the I, truth I, is popping out, right? Yes, because I respond back now, and once I respond back now, then the judge was like, "Okay, show time, bring it on." So they, when we're in the court, and um, I insist with the judge that listen, for us to move forward. The, yeah, plaintiff, put in that yeah. the plaintiff need to need to put in that contract. So yeah. I said to the judge, the same person who signed this fraudulent publishing agreement, Christopher Chin, is the same person who signed that 2006 agreement. It's the same person. So why would they leave that out? This need to be in the lawsuit. And I and I and I I go back and forth, and the judge was like, "Oh no, you have to get that into production of documents and etc. Cetera, etc." Cetera. But anyway, I, I push for it. I push for it. I push for it. And you know, Must you have know the taken judge was some like, time. <laughs> yeah, "Yeah, the judge was like a process." So anyway, Obviously. so I get, I get. Um, finally, I got an, I got an attorney that was outside of New York. Mm -hmm. But I would not call that attorney name. So I got an attorney, got an attorney corrupt, bad. I didn't even know that he was working for them. So I got an attorney outside of um, New York. The attorney is from Jamaica, by the way. So the judge said, okay, Mr. McGregor, this is what I'm going to do for you. I'm going to allow your attorney from Jamaica to, to, pro to, to try the case. He's going to, I will learn to represent you in the court, in the federal court, you know? And I said, okay, thanks, Your Honor. So I, I put my trust in this attorney. You know, I said, yes, I have an attorney. So what he, what he did now, so he, he knows some attorney in, in, in New Jersey. He, so he basically, them, on... them, them just help you because you really can't afford one, blah, blah, blah. Oh, oh, no, 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 no. This attorney was on for something, man. Because, as I said, when I got the attorney in Jamaica, the attorney in Jamaica realized that if him take my case, him can't help them. Right. But so, you never know that. Yes. Yeah, so, wait. Make sure, make sure this plug in. It have to make sure it's up. Hold on. <laughs> yeah. So, so, the attorney them know that he got in New Jersey. Hold on this. Because this thing, uh, hold on, because we can't make this dead, you know. We can't make it dead. So, yeah. So the attorney, the attorney in New Jersey, they they came on the case, and the first thing I did was like, "Hey, I'm not moving forward until you guys request that 2006 agreement, right?" Then it was a big debate, and oh, no, 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 you can't do this. That, that, that's not the process, right? That's not the process. And I was like, well, it is not business as usual because I'm a pro se in the case, and I'm not going to come off as a pro se if you guys are going to not do what I want. So I said to the judge, I want to still remain as pro se in the case because if these attorneys think that they can mislead me, it's not going to happen. So I want to stay on as a pro se. And the judge was like, Mr. McGregor, you're going to have to keep them uh, you're gonna have to let you're gonna have to stay pro se and let them go. I was like, I'm I'm staying pro se. They could go. So anyway, they work an agreement out saying that okay, they're gonna they're going to produce the documents, but whatever, whatever. But anyway, the document the document was produced. Right. When the documents produced. The following week, they want to do settlement. Because that was a document that was yeah, but, but But here what? That the document was false. No, no, no. However, but, why did you have to get a handwriting specialist? No, no, but listen, but, but I'm going to get to that. But here what happened, right? So when the documents produce, the attorney them didn't want to argue or bring it to the judge's attention. Or, or maybe they didn't understand it. So I break it down for them. And I said, guys, here's a signature for VP. 
who admit that they don't control my publishing, and this publishing agreement says they control everything. That's a fraud. Then I insist that, yo, we have to get the handwriting expert. One of the attorneys said, I agree. So they, they, they um, retain a top handwriting expert who works for the FBI. This is a top in New, York, in New York. So what this handwriting expert did, he request copy of every agreement that I have signed with VP and that I've, I've signed with other third party, whatever. And he put everything together. And then the report came back that the contract is a forgery. What VP produced, that agreement was straight up forgery, right? And this is no joke, you know, and this is not a debate or anything, you know, there's, there's documents to prove that. And um, that's when my attorneys, that's when um, all the attorneys started to turn against me to say that you have to settle you you don't have the money to take them to trial. I was like, but you guys see that is a fraud, so therefore, you guys know that you're going to be compensated because you guys send me the handwriting expert call you guys immediately and give you guys a report. You know it's a fraud, but no, you're telling me that I should settle it. So I was I was determined, and I was like, I'm not going to settle. I'm not going to settle. I'm, I'm moving forward, you know, and moving forward now, this is what they started to say to the court. VP did not put out that, VP did not create the Egyptian album. We did not put those liner note there. Everything was done by Kimar and he produced it to VP the way it is. You hear what I'm saying? So now they're saying that, oh, he made that he made those albums and give them to us. And then they start to make this argument to say, oh, yes, we did do um a special deal in the 2006 Egyptian agreement. So they start to backpedal and and start to do a lot of stuff, right? But I went to the copyright office now because I I started I remember I submit all of because for you to sue someone in a further um for copyright infringement lawsuit you have to have copyright registration. So this is very interesting. I'm gonna tell you. So when VP Records sue me, they they sue me for for the contract, but to get it in federal court. They sue me for infringement. So, so VP, this is what they do. They sue the copyright owner of the copyright owner, which a judge was kind of questioning that. So this is what they did. Wait, say that again. They sue. So VP sue the copyright owner for the copyright. So which is me. Yes. So they sue me for my own copyright. Mm -hmm. But what they did, they copyright all of my work in the library of, Con Li library of Congress of a work for I saying that okay yeah. <laughs> yeah so so yeah very interested yeah so what no, they did you have to say again, no. say it again, make it no listen so this is what they did so this is what they did so they sue the copyright owner for the copyright Yes. Which was questionable, right? Because but how they get how they get it in the court, they copyright all of my composition as a work for hire, right? Mm -hmm. But this is where it becomes interesting. How can you own something and then you're suing for it to say that it was a it was licensed to you? So it, things started to get very confused. Right. Very confused and complicated. So um, so what what we did, what I did now, I, I told a, I told a lawyer them that, yo, we're gonna have to 
we're going to have to um, let the judge know that they have committed fraud on the copyright office, right? And at the time, my attorney, they don't even know what I'm talking about. They, they don't know. The judge was kind of lost. Yes, <laughs> they were like, confusion, cause, right? Because I said, I, said, I, said, I said, yo, they commit fraud upon the copyright office. And they were like, what are you talking about? Oh, would they commit fraud? I was like, okay. They copyright all of my work as a work for Aya, which means that they pay me outright for my work. And that so they, they don't own. Have to, they don't have to report so, to you at all. So they don't have to report to me at all and whatever. But the contracts that are, that are here are saying license and agreement. And that's when one of the attorney catch on and say, oh, my God. Yes. So that's when one of the attorney catch on and says, oh, my God, I can't believe. I, I, I can't believe. So now one of the attorney, two, it's three of them, and then one of the attorneys start to, like, say, this is unbelievable because she was like, I, I don't, uh, this is, this is, she, she get confused, you know, it, and, but the matter was, the matter was very serious though. It was that's, like, that's one of the reasons why I don't think um, that like saying, like breaking it all down for, for the people listening would, you know, make a lot of sense because it took you years to figure everything out. Me, men, Many years. I mean, I've it, been going at this very since, twisted and twiny, right? Yeah, since two thousand, since two thousand and 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 eight, two thousand seven, two thousand eight. I'm going at this, and everything is like, even even now, everything is still twist and twine, and all of that, and which which I don't think it will, it will resolve, and again. You know, it's very complicated. So you did win that first case. What? What? I well, well, what I can or say that. Or you just settled. What you I settled. was, what I, what I can say that the matter was, the matter Resolve? was, the matter was set, was settled. settled. And when the matter right, settled, okay. when the matter settled, you would, you would, you would think that it resolved, right? Because that's what that's what a settlement is. When two people have disagreement and a settlement come in place, then. You would think the matter um, would be resolved, which it was pro was proven to be wrong. The matter was not resolved. So you had you to know? take them back to court. Yeah, again. Then we have to go back again. We have to go back again in 2018, and we we thought that okay, it's going to finally once and for all resolve again, but it's not. But again. It's complicated, and a lot of people will not believe this, and they they would think that um, this is slander, and we're trying to speak bad about um, the record label or the individual. But you know what? This is my experience, and everything I'm saying, you know, there's documents to back it up. And this is not about trying to like disrespect, disrespect anyone. Anyone. I'm not trying to, in no shape or form, disrespect VP Records or any other representative there. I'm going by the the facts and what they have done to me. What they have done to me, they ripped my life out. They destroyed. I I still up to now I can't recover from what VP have done to me. And again, as I said to you, this is not about trying to say anything bad about them or whatever. It's just a state. This is my story. This is what they have done done to me. They, they literally steal my life, Lord. They, they take it away, and they also destroy me by blacklisting me with all the record label and distribution, etc., across the U.S. and around the world. Because after I defend myself, which forced them to settle, you know, and even after they settle, even this, even as we speak, everything from two thousand, from the date started to today, they're still in dispute because they refuse, still refuse to resolve it. And again, I'm not trying to disrespect them. I'm not a social media, um, whatever them call them. I don't do that, right? This is this is my platform. This is your platform, and we have a, we have all rights to. To come on it and express ourselves, and this is not something to be debate if it is real or if what. It's my story. I'm the one who I, I go through that. Trust me, 
I this is something that I go through and I and I will challenge VP records any day um on this because I have the documents, I have the email, we go to court, we go to like two court, you know, two lawsuits on this matter. You know, so it's not something that to be debatable or anyone to write comment to say, yo, um, VPs at this and VPs at this and Kemar that and them just do this because I'm saying. But, but the thing is, can I say something? Mm -hmm. The fact is, you see, you released your music and you had an agreement for a third, only to hear that your entire catalog was sold to a company with a contract that you three, did not sign. For three thousand dollars. Wait there. Wait so in the so in the contract, yeah, they said to the, they, they, it stated that I assigned my entire catalog to them. You, for Kemar Magrata, gave yeah. them your catalog for three thousand dollars. So I gave them, so I gave them my, I gave, I, I signed to them my catalog for three thousand dollars. That's what they said. That that's what that's what the agreement said. The, the, the fraudulent publishing agreement. That's what it says, and um. So you just come from Baka and you don't know nothing. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. Okay. And 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 you know, people will say, "Yo, why, why, why we're now hearing this and all of that, right?" But you know, for me, I thought all of this was over. And they were going to do the right thing, right? And it hit me again when they reach out to you and start to mislead you and try to tell you that, oh, Kemar is a problem. Kemar, why the songs are more tied up? Kemar or this and Kemar or that. When we went into the court, we correct, we correct all the splits on the songs and everything, which means that Every single artist who I who I produce, their rights was reserved and is 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 within their best interest. Every artist that I produce to go and claim claim their claim their share because maybe the same way VP have been telling you things that oh Kemar is a problem Kemar White God I'm pretty sure they're saying the same thing to other artists. So I would recommend every artist who have produced music for. That was released by 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 VP Records and Greasy. They should go and 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 check those songs because there was a settlement on it and their rights was reserved. And in that agreement, it you know both parties should 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 honor the agreement and stuff like that. But for them now to behind be, be, in the so they're staying in the back and telling artists that okay, the reason why this is not fits is because of Kemar to pretend like they're under the settlement agreement. And guess what? For me, I I don't think I can keep it inside me anymore. More than just to express myself and to just say what I go through with them. They destroy mm -hmm. my life. They take away my livelihood. I remember the last I remember after end up start taking the gray on bus go to New York. You know, I remember when I checked my bank. Now you make me cry now. No, 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 no. I'm a cry man. I remember I have to start taking yeah. the gray on. Seriously. I remember I have to start taking the gray on bus to go to New York to go to court because when I check my account, my account only have 30 US dollars. So they they take away everything that I have. I used to literally have to like um stay in the, the, the like because most times it's like snowstorm. That's New York. And after like stay in the station for like eighteen hours in cold just to catch the next green bus or the next train. And you don't, and... you don't have the money to pay for the hotel. No, I, I don't have the money to fly, so I have to take like the gray on bus to go to New York to go to a court because remember I'm pro se, so I'm defending myself, you know. So this is my story, and this is no joke, and 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 I'm telling you seriously. I don't I don't need no my God or anything from no one. I don't need that. I'm just telling I'm just telling my Yeah, because story. you defended your rights and you did what you had to do. Yeah. I, I mean doing without entirely. Listen, listen, I defend I defend my rights and I believe everyone should defend 
their rights. I mean, this is my this is my livelihood, right? I didn't I didn't bond come say in a gold spoon or nothing. You know what I bond come say a buckle to which on a barrel top, you know. So and you know God bless us and we you know with this talent and with with our talent we were able to help ourselves and help, help our children. So we have to fight for it, and right. that's what I did. I fight for it, and I'm gonna continue to fighting for it because they're not they're still not doing what they're supposed to do because look at it if you you have to end up suing them which uncalled for all they have to do is say hey shauna hey tana we and kemar work something out no we're gonna fix everything we need to they're, hear about your part yeah so right. so it is you know i i again to me it, you know it seems like instead of like just working things out and doing it the right way they would rather pay every attorney possible that they could pay right than pay the artist themselves for the works they created why because i think one of the main thing is they don't want to admit that they actually did something wrong and then again one of the things that i noticed that they like to say is domicile in jamaica yeah. jamaica to the copyright office and the rest of the world is a third world country so you know, uh, you know, really, that the, for them level, a registered company in the United States operating and paying taxes and stuff. You yes. are from Jamaica. So this is one other thing. A couple of um, the guys them that like from BMG and Sony, they even told me on the phone that man, they told me that you guys just smoke a lot of weed, so you guys don't remember what you signed. You know, so I got a lot of that from those from those big executives. So. They literally look at us like we're nothing. Seriously. Like how people look from people when they're African and say, oh, yes. they, they, they just like, listen. it's just not the impression that we get listen. of Africa listen. before visiting are the same thing. Like they look listen. at listen. you Listen, listen, Shauna. Shauna, Shauna, this is no joke, right? When I hear some of these executives speak, because when I call them up and I talk to them about my rights, they were like, yo, you guys just smoke a lot of weed and, and forgot what you signed or... And we know you are. You got you. But over. in this case, it wasn't something yeah. you signed. It's something no, they signed I wasn't. for you. <laughs> one of one of them, one of the executive from BMG, he told me that. Well, I know that you guys probably just take a car, um, take a car from them and sign away your rights, and now you want more money. And I was like, because even I uh, like during my lawsuit, I started to realize a lot of a lot of the things that other artists did. You know, even though it's not my business, but but I I learned because as I said to you these executives used to like put me into that category they used to you know they used to talk about how oh, well we get information that you guys sign contract and on your way and on your way out you just throw it in the garbage can and all of that so so there's a stigma and and creator creator artist and producer and component writer from jamaica where nobody but that is like a jewel it. for them that is like um a jewel for companies like those because at the end of the day if everybody has the impression that you don't know what you're doing and you throw contracts in the garbage and you just smoke a lot of weed then you're really nobody really really no no, and no that's yeah that's what i'm that's that's what i'm trying to say so so you know but because even for me i even say, um say to one of the executive i was i say to him that oh so you're trying to say to me that um i sign a contract with vp records on the the influence of of of, of drugs you know because <laughs> no no that's but i was like okay say that to a judge <laughs> say that but to what a... i'm happy for is that you know like in your case you see you know one of the, the the main thing for me is that when I was asking the questions like, yo, why am I not getting my royalties on this song? And why is it tied up? And why, you know, all the registers, the registration them, it looks like it's you guys who register the song them. But yet all of the, the, the royalties are like, you know, tied up in one. And them say, oh, because Kamara have multiple publishers. But when you look at the songs, I see them company name, they're funny. So what do you mean multiple publishers? <laughs>